Hi. So today I'll be talking about something which is in the media, discussed among patients, uh, even a discussion among doctors and healthcare professionals as well. So the issue is, are we having a lot of caesareans? So this whole debate is uh, colored by a lot of distrust in the public among healthcare industry and also by a basic lack of understanding of the problem. So the general understanding is that uh, cesarean rates are increasing. So is that true? The short answer is yes. The incidence of uh, cesareans about uh, 50 years ago was about 5%. The incidence now is around 35%. So yes, we have an increase in the caesarean section rates from somewhere around 5% to 35%. So that's a significant jump. So this jump in uh, number of caesarean sections over the last 50 years has been very colorfully explained as an epidemic of caesarean sections. Of course, the incidence of caesarean uh, differs from uh, place to place. In Africa, the incidence of uh, cesarean sections is around 5%. Australia, developed country, is around 31%. And in some places in South America, it's nearly 60%. So the incidence in India is around 17 to 18%, which is quite good. But uh, in some urban areas, um, it has crossed 50% as well. So are we justified? Are we justified to have this uh, increase in the number of cesarean sections? So to clarify this question, I would need to look at some other statistics. And a very revealing statistics is in what we call the perinatal mortality rate or the uh, number of uh, babies who die during childbirth. Now, If you look 50 years ago, the perinatal mortality rate was actually very high, around 30 for every 1,000 deliveries. That was when the caesarean section rate was around 5%. 15 years ago, where the incidence has jumped to 30%, our perinatal mortality rate has actually dropped to nearly 5-8%. to Which shows that as we increase the number of caesarean sections, we are losing far less number of babies. And a significant number that too. And if you look at the country stats as well, Africa has an incidence of cesarean around uh, 5% even today. And even today, the perinatal mortality rate is around 30%. And if you look at Australia, which has around 31% cesarean section rate, their perinatal mortality is less than 5%. And you have similar statistics even with uh, maternal mortality rate, that is the uh, rate at which mothers die during childbirth and also a significant decrease in the incidence of babies with learning disabilities. But it is also clear that at some particular point we will have too many caesarean sections. At some time we will be figuring out that we are probably doing too much harm than too much good. So obviously from 5% to say around 30% there was, an, there was an improvement in the health care, but at what point are we doing too many cesarean sections? Where are we doing more harm than good? What is that magical figure? So the WHO came out with a figure of around 17%. So it said that if you can bring your cesarean sections below 17 or maybe 15%, that probably be good. We'll be not doing too many cases of cesarean, so less no amount of maternal trauma but it also will be able to pull through quite a few babies. The problem with bringing statistics into management of patients is that our patients are not numbers. We cannot refuse a person's caesarean section to save a baby just because we happen to have a high incidence of caesarean section. So WHO figured this out that this was an absurd way to sort of give you an arbitrary figure that you should go more than a certain number and they basically said ultimately that uh, okay that was not a good thing to do and they have now basically said that uh, if you feel that there's a need for cesarean you should do it don't look at numbers 
So we doctors tend not to look at statistics too much. Uh, we just look at the particular patient, the particular baby, and uh, see whether there's a requirement. We look at whether cesarean section would benefit that particular baby and that mother, and we'll just do it. So that's your answer. I mean, cesarean sections should be done if it's necessary. So can we decrease the number of cesarean sections? Well, yes. Here we have two factors. One is the mother factor and one is the doctor factor. The mother factor would be something like uh, a mother being scared of going through labor or uh, scared of the pain or uh, picking out a good day and time. You know, during the 2000 year new year, there were a lot of cesareans done so that the baby would be born on uh, 2000 year. Maybe if we can avoid those reasons, we can decrease the number of cesarean sections done. And then we have the doctor reasons for doing unnecessary cesarean sections. Now this is a very controversial area, okay. The popular position uh, in public is often that uh, hospitals and doctors do cesarean sections in excess uh, basically because it uh, provides them with better financial reward. I feel that uh, the non-medical reasons for doing uh, cesarean sections would be more of, uh, you know, Convenient time. Now, if you have a patient who is in labor at say 9 o'clock in the night and she is likely to have a cesarean section at 3 a.m., but not definitely, such patients invariably land up with a cesarean at 10 p.m. You know, that sort of thing. And I'm sure it happens. Is it right? No, it's not. It shouldn't be done. Uh, it should be done only if it's necessary. So preponing a cesarean section just because it could happen uh, is not fair because she could have delivered at 3 a.m. in the morning. It would have led to a sleepless night for the team and for the patient, but she could have delivered. So I would rather, you know, let it play out and see what happens at 3 a.m. And if she has a cesarean at 3 a.m., well, so be it. But yes, I am aware that sometimes cesareans are done for convenient time. And it's not right. Another reason why cesareans can be done um, by some doctors a little bit more than other doctors is because of a lack of skill in applying instruments during a vaginal delivery. Now, vaginal delivery done with instruments like a forceps or a ventus is highly skill driven and uh, needs a lot of training as well. And all doctors are not the same and all doctors would not have the same amount of uh, skill and training. And uh, so if a doctor is not really very, very skilled at it, it's likely that doctor would have a slightly higher cesarean rate than say someone who has uh, good skill in that uh, technique. So another place where cesareans are often done is when there's a fear of lawsuit or complications. So so-called BVIPs, well, they tend to have a higher cesarean rate. If you look at uh, our doctor families, you'll find most of the patients within doctor families tend to have a very high cesarean rate as well. Is it right? Well, again, I don't agree with that. I would treat my patients who are doctors as patients. I would not try to keep them on a pedestal and uh, treat them differently. But, you know, it's easier said than done often. So these would be more likely reasons than, uh, you know, financial reward. So all doctors are not equal. All do not have the same ethics. All do not have the same morals. So I will not and I cannot make any excuses for uh, unethical actions. And all I would like to say is that patients should choose their doctors wisely. I'll leave it at that. So that's your answer essentially. If you need a cesarean section, if your doctor can explain to you why you need a cesarean section and you are convinced that the doctor's decision is right, then you should go for it. You are entitled to a complete explanation by a doctor and why you need a cesarean section. It's your right and you should ask for it. So how do you deliver your babies uh, naturally or vaginally? How do you do that? Well, I would suggest that if the safest way for you to deliver is a vaginal route, then that's the route to go. If the safest way to deliver your baby or for you is a cesarean section, then that's the way to go. 
So I always uh, ask my patients to concentrate on the outcome, that is a safe mother and a safe baby, rather than the route of delivery. So you need to find yourself a good doctor and a good hospital, trust them completely, and trust them to make the best decision in your as well as your baby's best interest. So I know this capsule has gone a little longer than my normal capsule, but the topic is important. I hope it helps. Bye.